Hi, it's Chris from Chris Watson Music, and today we're still working on the drowning song that I've just finished up, and we're going to have a look at the rhythm section. So we're talking here about the drums and the bass guitars. So let's just get straight into it. The drums here, very, very simple. It's a sort of mid-paced rock ballad song, so I didn't want to go too crazy with the drums. I wanted to keep them nice and simple, and... That's pretty much what I've done. There's only a couple of little fills. It's more about the dynamics rather than any sort of flashy playing to, to really drive this song along. And the song literally just starts out with just a kick drum. And that's pretty carried through for a good part of the song. And we see here what we end up doing is slowly adding some hi-hats, some hi-hats and some stick before the full drums actually come through and and kick in and then they drop out again lots of toms for a bridge section of the song before the drums come back in again and then with some more slight variation towards the end so let's just have a listen to the drums by themselves and you'll get an idea what sort of sound i'm using on them in this track so we'll just solo out the drums There's a bit more reverb on these drums than I'd probably normally use, but this song's a quite an expansive sounding song for a lot of the parts, so I just wanted a, a drum sound that sort of fills that out. If we have a listen when the hi-hats come in. Now, I didn't really notice before, but when you just hear the hi-hats and the, the kick drum like that, kind of reminds me of Iron Maiden's Run to the Hills. It just kind of needs a bit more of an accent on it. Let's have a listen again. Anyway, let's have a listen before it comes in. We've got a bit of a the side stick happening. And you can really starting to hear that reverb coming through there now. Again, I don't normally use that much reverb on the drums, but in this track, it, it just worked. And I guess that's a, an important thing to, to take, you know, to keep in mind when you're working on a song. You may be doing something that you don't normally do, or, you know, technically may not be right. Not that there is really a right or wrong when it comes to making music, but it may not go against the norm. But if it works in the song, then do it use it it's all about the song everything you do you, everything you record all the parts it's all about trying to make the song better trying to make it sound better in this case i needed reverb uh, more reverb than i'd normally use on the drums i liked it and i kept it in uh, so down here you just see we've got some really simple fills we'll go to this fill towards the end and then we'll just go to the the tom breakdown Very, very simple stuff. It's, it's all the song really needed. Um, now, I will point out just here, everything's a little bit different from the way I would normally do things. You'll see here that I haven't named any of the lanes, but just so that you're aware, um, on the lanes here, this is where I've usually got the hi-hats and the cymbals. Uh, here would be the snare. This is the kick. And here's where I put in my, my fills. The reason they're not named, like I normally would do, I had originally started working on this song by having the drums multi out. So each, sam each uh, sample bank in the NNXT was going through to its own channel in the SSL mixer. I was having some problems getting it to sound the way that I wanted to. I'm still tweaking my drum sound through the SSL mixer to, to sound the way that I want. So I just went, ah, screw it. And went through and pulled out just a stereo patch again, uh, straight combinator from the Reason Drums refill, and just moved everything over to the new new uh, new mix channel that I made. So let's go and have a look at the rack so you can just see exactly what it is. So you can see here, Reason Drum Kits, Rock Ballad. That's it. I've added more reverb to it, 
and that's about it. It's a straight standard sound out of the Reason drum kits. Again, it's another example of just how good these refills do sound. Um, I've pretty much left everything as it is. Uh, I had some slight EQ here on mainly the kick and part of the snare, just to get them sounding a bit more the way that I wanted and get them to fit in the mix a little bit more. But apart from that, it's, it's pretty standard. Um, one little change that I did do from this standard rock ballad kit that we've got here um, is I went through and I believe I've replaced the cymbals and the toms. And that gave me the real sound that I wanted. And if you've got these refill kits and you're not sure how, you know, you've, you think you've got a great sound, but you just maybe don't like the cymbals or don't like the toms or the snare, very easy to go through and change. Uh, all you really need to do, find the, the instrument in here. So here we can see we've got the snare drum. And all we need to go through and do, hit browse patch. And it brings up a window and there's a whole bunch of different snares for you to try. So you're not just limited to the way that the kit sounds. You can go through and, and mix and match to your heart's content. Um, a lot of people don't realize you can do that. They think once they open up the refills, uh, that's how it is. No, use it as a starting point and then tweak it to get the sound exactly that you're after. Um, now, the other part of the rhythm section, obviously, bass guitar. Bass guitar over here. You can see I've got two channels here for my bass guitar. Open them up. What we've basically got is the the bass guitar that's been processed through my uh, Pod Line Six UX2, running through Pod Farm. I've got a Neptune on here because my bass guitar's frets are maybe a little bit dodgy. Uh, I do get a bit of sort of wow happening when I hit hit the strings at certain velocities, which means it tends to go a little bit sharp sometimes. So the Neptune's just in there just to rein that back in and stop that from happening. You'll see down here as well, at the same time when I'm recording the take, I record the DI, the direct input from the UX2. It lets me do this. It's fantastic that way. And it's pretty much the straight sound running through a unison. And what that, that really does is it, to me, it kind of gives it a sort of Duff McKagan, Guns N' Roses-ish sort of vibe to it. So if we listen to them all together, okay, just the drums, and then here comes the bass. So just the process signal. Just the DI signal. And you'll see that the DI has got a bit of EQ going on there as well. And that's all just been done through um, through the SSL strip. <laughs> I've uh, pulled quite a fair bit out of, of the low end. Um, you'll see the, if you have a look at the filter up here, you can see it's quite, quite high for the bass guitar. And the two combined give a really, really nice sound. Uh, the other thing to take note of with the bass guitar uh, it was a little bit tricky to do this way using the drum kit the way that I've got it set up. Once I've got everything as multi-outs going through the SSL, it will be much easier. If we go back to the rack and we'll have a look. Let's see, we've got the rack turned around here. You'll see on the main tone, I've got using a sidechain input for the compressor. So where that's actually getting fed from, if we go back over to the drums, you'll see in the drum mixer, send the auxiliary send four, okay, that goes through and is connected up there to the side chain input. And if we flick it back around, you'll see send four, which I haven't named. Um, you'll see there that it's going through and it's just the kick drum is turned all the way up and the kick drum's triggering the compressor on the bass guitar. So all that's doing is providing some light ducking when the kick drum kicks through so that they're not fighting over some of those same frequencies. It, it's really subtle, um, but it's again, it's one of those effects that when it's there, you don't notice it. When it's not there, you do notice it. And I think for a lot of processing of sounds, that's usually the best thing to keep in mind. Uh, so that's pretty much the, the main rhythm section that we've got going on there. And um, 
what we'll do next up we'll have a look at the guitars